Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of Intermediate Java Game Programming. And we're going to start out exactly where we left off, and that was programming our run method. So in our run method, we are going to need three things to happen. And let's just make some space here. We're going to want to update the game, game update. And game update is things like if you remember previously in the run method we called like we called methods such as move and uh, I can't remember more examples but game update is basically any variables or states that need to be changed uh, in your game. Now if the game is updated we then need to render the game so we can call game render and they're underlined red now we'll be making them in just a minute. Um, game render is basically going to draw it's going to create the double buffer image and then once the double buffer image is created we can paint the screen so paint screen like this and effectively these three methods are the same as calling the repaint method except well they're not the same as they do the equivalent job of that but just they do it better as well because um we get to program them manually and it means we have full control over it. So now that I've told you these three methods, we can create those right now. So we first of all we can make these private. Uh, private void game update. Game update is a simple one. All we need to say is if the game is running. So if running, then um, if running and game is not equal to null, game is our thread remember so if the game is running and the thread is not equal to null we'll just add a comment update game state and we don't need to do that now because we don't have anything to update at the moment so we can then make our second method private void game render and this is also pretty simple uh, all we need to do uh, with game render uh, sorry just tell my friend I'm making a tutorial <laughs> there we go uh, anyways game render all we're gonna do first of all we're gonna check if double buffer image uh, is equal to null which it will be initially so if double buffer image equals null then we want to create the buffer um, and we do this by this is gonna look familiar create image get width get height um, and then we can do another check if the double buffer image is still null then obviously something went wrong uh, we can system system.error.println we can say double buffer image is still null exclamation mark just to get our point across and then we can return. Return is the same as break, but just for methods. So if it ever reaches this statement here, the whole method will just like cancel and quit. Um, we can now put else. So if we create the image and the image is e the image is not equal to null, so it is equal to something. In other words, we successfully created our buffered image. Then we can set the double buffer graphics equal to the image dot get graphics. And now that we've got that, we can come out of this big if statement here, and we can just clear the screen by simply setting the color double buffer graphics dot set color color dot white, and then we can draw or fill rather fill rectangle at zero zero get width and get height with the brackets. There we go. And that just clears the screen with a nice white um, background. And once we've done that we can draw our game elements. Draw game elements. And we'll make a method called draw later on. And we'll pass double buffer graphics through it. We'll put it right here just so we don't confuse ourselves. Public void draw and it can take graphics g as a parameter. And the last one we need to do, if you remember, 
I'll do this down here. The last one we need to do is paint screen. We can also make this private. Private void paint screen. And we don't take graphics as a parameter in this because we call in our run method and we have no graphics to give it in the run method. So we simply create a graphics object at the start. Graphics G. And then we want to try something. We want to say uh, G equals this dot get graphics. So get the graphics of the J panel. And I'll just go ahead and catch now. Exception E system dot error dot print line. Print the E. Delete that dodgy bracket. There we go. Um, this dot get graphics. And then we can say if double buffer image is not equal to null and graphics is not equal to null. In other words, um, if double buffer image has the buffer on it and if graphics is equal to something, in other words, if we have graphics um, which we would, our graphics would come from our drawing elements here. Um, uh, yeah, if we have graphics then we can go ahead and draw the image. Double buffer image, zero, zero, and null. And that is basically done now. That was just a more convoluted way of doing our paint component thing like double buffer image equals create image, then grab the graphics, then pass the graphics through, and then paint the image. It's a more secure and better way of doing it, and it also means we don't need to call repaint anymore, which was a pain in the butt because it kind of ruined uh, some of our features, such as uh, making maps and things like that. Um, there's one more thing I should add. I think this only applies to people who use Linux, but I'm going to add it anyway because it won't really make a difference. Um, if we, if you use Linux, you need to sync the display or sync the graphics of the. Um, I'll just add a comment here for some operating systems. Um, it basically just um, flushes and syncs the graphics on your screen and then we can just dispose of those graphics because we no longer need them after all of that has been called and that is basically it for painting the screen let's have a nice hello world statement if we set the color here to red that'll do nicely draw string hello world at 100 100 and let's run this and I got a really large error so I'm just going to pause it and um, the problem is, just figured it out, is that if I drag this error output up you see we have an illegal argument exception because get width and get height are returning the value zero and that's because the J panel we've only set a preferred size, we haven't set like an actual size so that's why it's returning zero which means we can simply replace these with um, uh, the G width and G height, which we programmed earlier. What did I just do? Hold on. Wow, I deleted all of that. G width, G height, and then we can also replace that. And now that's done, we can just run this. And we have our hello world on our screen, and that's all done by our magic, game rendering, updating, buffering, all that. Um, all that done manually by ourselves. I feel so proud. And on that note, we are out of time. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can see now that we've already created the kind of basis for a game engine. So, next tutorial, we're going to be creating stuff like... Um, tiles like printing out the tiles to the screen because now that we can actually do that because we've created our own rendering system um, so stick around please subscribe uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time